Michael, if I could just get you to sign this right Whoops. here, which uh, gives you the contents of the safe deposit box. Thank you. And this one, please, which uh, clears the bank of all further responsibility for the contents. It's kind of exciting, huh? Maybe we'll find out that your mother had secret millions lying around. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we get started? Now, your mother is interred at the uh, Cedar Heights uh, funeral home until arrangements can be made. I thought everything was arranged. Well, there's a problem. What problem? Well, your mother left explicit instructions that she wished to be cremated. Cremated? Well, I know. I don't understand it either. <gasps> when did she decide this? Well, uh, apparently just before death. Well, this is crazy. I don't know anybody who gets cremated. Well, lots of people do. Well, nobody in my family did. Now, Dad bought cemetery plots at Prairie Hills. One for him, one for Mom. Well, it clearly states in the will. I, I don't care what it says. You know, maybe Mom was delirious. You know, maybe she didn't know what she was saying. No, if she wanted to be cremated, why the hell did she let Dad buy two plots, huh? Well, she was very specific. She wanted her ashes to be thrown off Roseman Bridge. What? <laughs> Bizarre. Mr. Peterson, are you sure that Mom wrote all this? Well, it was notarized and witnessed by uh, Mrs. Lucy Delaney. Maybe you can ask her. Who the hell was Lucy Delaney? No, I remember Mrs. Delaney. I just have no idea well, what she was. I don't care whether it's legal or not. We're not cremating her and throwing her ashes off of some bridge where we can't even go visit her because she's going to be blown all over the place like an ashtray. Not to mention people driving all over her and doggies doing their business. We're not doing it. I'm not even sure it's Christian. Maybe it's an Italian thing. Their mother was Italian. Doesn't matter. Move on. Well, uh, we can come back to this. Why don't we uh, open the box? <laughs> She's not wearing a bra. Oh, that's the Hollywell Bridge. In case anybody's interested. Why are there two deeds here? Now, let me see. Oh, this is for the additional particulars he purchased in 59. And this? Oh, those are bills of sale uh, from equipment your mother sold. This one's for the original parcel that your father purchased. And uh, let's see. Michael. Yeah? Michael. What? Could you come here for a minute, please? What? Where are we going? about me, about leaving me anything in particular? No. <laughs> What's going on? Um, we were just wondering how it might be better if Carolyn and I would look this stuff over ourselves. We don't <laughs> want to keep you two waiting around. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll contact your office about the legal work. I struggle to put it together in a way that allows me to continue knowing that we're on separate roads. But then, but then I look through the lens of my camera and you're there. I start to write an article and I find myself writing it to you. It's clear to me now that we have been moving towards each other, towards those four days, all of our I don't want to hear anymore. Burn the damn thing. I don't want to hear it. Throw it away.
What's he saying now? Well, he just goes on about how if Mom ever needed him, she could reach him through the National Geographic magazine in Washington, D.C. He was a photographer. He promises not to write again. And then all it says is, I love you, Robert. Well, that would be some trick. He's already dead. That's what this other letter is. From his attorney. He left most of his things to Mom. And requested... What? That he be cremated and his ashes thrown off Rosman Bridge. Damn him. I knew that Mom wouldn't have thought that up herself. It was some damn perverted photographic mind influencing her. When did the bastard die? 82. Well, wait a minute. That was three years after Daddy. Do you think that... I don't know. I am completely in the dark here. That's what I get from moving away. We were kids when this happened. I... I can't believe it. Do you think that she had sex with them? Oh, my lord, Michael, it must be nice living inside your head with Peter Pan and the Easter Bunny. Don't talk to me like that. She was my mother, for Christ's sakes, and I find that she was... She was a... A what? Don't say that. What am I supposed to think? I can't believe she never told me. We spoke at least once a week. How could she do that? Why didn't she meet him? Did Dad know? Is there anything else in that envelope? January 1987. Dear Carolyn, I hope you're reading this with Michael. I'm sure he wouldn't be able to read it by himself, and he'll need some help understanding all this. First and most of all, I love you both very much. And although I feel fine, I thought it was time to put my affairs, excuse that word, in order. I can't believe she's making jokes. After going through the safety deposit box, I'm sure you'll find your way to this letter. It's hard to write this to my own children. I could let this die with the rest of me, I suppose. But as one gets older, one's fear subsides. What becomes more and more important is to be known. Known for all that you were during this brief stay. How sad it seems to me to leave this earth without those you love the most, ever really knowing who you were. It's easy for a mother to love her children no matter what. It's something that just happens. I don't know if it's as simple for children. You're all so busy being angry at us for raising you wrong. His name was Robert Kincaid. He was a photographer and he was here in 1965 shooting an article for National Geographic on the covered bridges of Madison County. Remember when we got that issue 
how we felt like celebrities. Remember when we started getting the subscription? That's what I was going to bridge. That must be Robert Kincaid. And that's Mom's medallion. I don't want you to be angry with him. I hope after you know the whole story, you might even think well of him, even grateful. Grateful. It's all there in the three notebooks. Oh. It was the week of the Illinois State Fair. The two of you were going with Dad to exhibit Carolyn's prize tear. It was the Sunday night you left. I, I know, know it, it sounds, sounds awful, awful, but I couldn't wait for you all to leave. You were going to be gone until Friday. Four days. Just four days. I'm sorry, didn't mean to yell. I want you to stay away from anything too spicy. Mm-hmm. And you promise me. I swear, only filters, no more than half pack a day. Yeah. I got my work. Because Doc Reynolds said you'd be better off. I know, I know, I'm only kidding. Yeah. Sure you don't want to go? I'm positive. What are you going to do for four days as a woman of leisure? <laughs> Same thing I do with a hired hand, except with less help. I'm not going to be able to sleep, you know. I can't sleep without you next to me anymore. <laughs> it's only four days, huh? Me so much, you know, I don't like you. Get out. Oh, God. 
You like that song? <laughs> Just you and me, buddy. Just you and me. I get the distinct feeling that I'm lost. Are you supposed to be in Iowa? Yeah. Well, then, you're not that lost. I'm looking for a bridge. Uh, cut one of those covered bridges out here in this neighborhood. Roseman Bridge? That's it. Well, you're pretty close. It's only about two miles from here. Which way? Well, you go that way and come to Carter's and turn left. To, to Cutter's? Cutter's a farm. Small house close to the road. Big, mean, yellow dog. Mean, yellow dog, okay. Yeah, then you uh, go along that road until you come to a fork, and uh, it's only less than half a mile. And then where after the fork? The right. And then you... No, no, <laughs> not that far. Uh, excuse me. You pass Peterson's. Peterson? Peterson's a farm. And uh, past the old schoolhouse, you turn left. It would be easier to tell you if the roads were marked. <laughs> yeah, it certainly would. Well, I can take you if you want. Or I can tell you. I can take you or tell you. Either way, it's up to you. I don't care. Well, I wouldn't want to take you away from what you're doing. No, I was just going to have some iced tea and then... Uh, split the atom, but that can wait. Okay. I just get my shoes. Exactly expecting company. Where are we headed? Out. Then right. Out. Wonderful smell to Iowa. Kind of particular in this part of the country. You know what I mean? No. Well, it's kind of hard to explain. It's, uh, I guess it's in the loam of the soil. Kind of rich, earthy, alive. Well, maybe not alive. Anyway, you, you don't smell it. Maybe it's because I live here. Yeah, I guess so. Sounds great, though. Are you from Washington originally? Yeah, I lived there until I was about in my mid-twenties, and I moved to Chicago when I got married. Oh. When did you move back? After the divorce. Oh.
how long have you been married? Long time. Long time. Mm. Where are you from originally? Do you mind me asking? No, I don't mind uh, uh, your asking. I'm uh, from... I'm born in Italy. Italy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From Italy to Iowa. Mm -hmm. Where about some Italy? We lived in a small town on the eastern side. No one's ever heard of, called Bari. Bari? Mm. Yeah, I know Bari. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was once on an assignment to Greece, and I had to go through Bari to get the boat at Brandisi. And uh, I was looking out. It looked like a pretty country, so I got off the train and stayed a few days. You just got off the train because it looked pretty? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Excuse me. Care for a cigarette? Uh, yeah. sure. Yeah, sure. I have one. Tell me, how long have you lived in Iowa? Long. You just got off the train and stayed without knowing anyone there? Yeah. That's it. It's beautiful. shoot this today. I'll probably just do a little prep work. Shoot it tomorrow. The light's no good right now. Okay. So I'll just wait. I don't mind. Go on down here. I think this is about as good a place to start as any. Beautiful bridge. Mm. Out here much? No. Always this hot around here? Oh, yes, this time of year, yeah. There's some sodas in the back of the truck if you'd like one. Oh, would you like one? Oh, not right now, thanks. I'll go get one.
caught me. I was just picking you some flowers. Oh. Men still do that, don't they? I'm not out of date, am I? I've been picking flowers for a woman, a sign of appreciation. No, not at all. Except those are poisonous. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I never. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you sadistic by nature, or what? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. You're very beautiful. I'm sorry. You're looking for something in particular. There's not much of a selection. No, I uh, had a station out of Chicago earlier. Played some good blues. Seven degrees. Fourteen ten. Looks nice. Care for another cigarette? Sure. Is that mean yellow dog you were talking about? Uh... <laughs> Is that a white? No, he's Well, I want to thank you for all your kindnesses, Mrs. Johnson. Francesca. Robert. Would you like some iced tea? Yeah. Afraid to have those in here? Hmm? <laughs> I'm so sorry I did that. I don't know why I why I said that. <laughs> Where are you staying while you're here? Oh. Some place with small cabins. Uh, something or other motor in. Uh, huh. I I've got it written down, but I haven't even checked in yet. And how long are you here for? Well, I don't know, maybe four or five days, a week at the outside, as long as it takes to get the work done. Mm -hmm. Where's your family? My husband took the kids to the Illinois State Fair. My daughter is entering a prize steer. How old? Uh, about a year and a half. No, I meant kids. Oh! <laughs> Michael is 17, and Caroline is 16. That's nice having kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not kids anymore. Mm. Things change. They always do. One of the laws of nature. Most people are afraid of change, but if you look at it like it's something you can always count on, then it can be a comfort. There's not many things you can really count on. Yeah, I guess. I'm one of those people that it frightens, I think. No, oh, I doubt that. Why do you say that? Well, oh, from Italy to Iowa, that's a big change. No, oh, yeah. but uh, Richard was in the army there. I met him when I was living in Naples. I didn't know anything about Iowa. I just cared that it was America and 
Of course, being with Richard, so. What's he like? He's very clean. Um, clean? Yeah. No, I mean... <laughs> uh, he's other things, too. He's, uh, he's a very hard worker. Very caring. Honest. He's gentle. He's a good father. And clean. And you like living here in Iowa, I guess, huh? Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to tell anyone. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Oh, it's just fine. It's quiet. And the people are real nice. And uh, all that's true, mostly. It is quiet. And uh, the people are nice, mm -hmm. in certain ways. They're... You know, we all help each other out. If someone gets sick or hurt, all the neighbors come in and they pick the corn or harvest the oats or whatever it needs to be done. And if you go into town, you can leave your car unlocked and uh, let the kids run around. Don't, don't worry about them. Yeah, there are a lot of nice things about the people here, and I respect them for those qualities. It's not what I dreamed of <laughs> as a girl. You know, I scribbled something down the other day. I often do that when I'm out on the road. And it kind of goes like this. The old dreams were good dreams. They didn't work out, but I'm glad I had them. I don't know what all that means. I just thought I might use it someday. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think I know how you feel. Would you like to stay for dinner? There's not much of a choice in town. And uh, you'd have to eat alone. So would I. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't get a home-cooked meal too often out on the road. I'd like that a lot. Mind if I uh, put some film in the fridge? No, go ahead. This heat out here isn't too forgiving. Anything I can do? Help? To help what? Cook? Yeah, and cook. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, what can I do? 
after you scrape the carrot. Scrape with the carrots? Mm -hmm. And then grate them in the salad. staring right at me with the most lascivious look you've ever seen in your life. I mean, more than you've ever seen on any creature with that much hair. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I freeze, of course, because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And then it started coming towards me. It was. Oh, it was. Oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> you're blushing. <laughs> well, it's a very painful subject, a very sore, sore subject matter. Yeah. What happened? We became engaged. technical mm. yeah the trouble of being a journalist too long is you stop giving yourself permission to invent you know mm. i think i'll just stick to making pictures oh. making pictures mm. i like that you really love what you do don't you yeah i'm obsessed by it with you mm. why is that do you think i don't know I don't think obsessions have reasons. That's why they're obsessions. Mm. You sound like an artist. Well, I wouldn't say that. National Geographic likes their photos in focus and not too much personal comment. I don't mind, really. I'm no artist. That's one of the curses of being too well-adjusted, uh, too normal. No, I don't think you're so normal. Really? I mean, I didn't mean it in the way that it sounded. I mean, you know. That's, that's all right. We'll just chalk it up to a compliment and move on. <laughs> did you just love teaching? Mm. Yeah, sometimes I did. When there was a particular student who can make a difference, I... I know they're all supposed to, but they don't. It's not true. You tend to single out one or two who you think you can contribute something to. And did you? I don't know. I hope so. I know one of them went to medical school. Hmm. Why'd you quit? My children, my kids. And Richard didn't like my work. So. Hmm. But you miss it, obviously. I don't know. I never think about it. Tell me, what's the most exciting place that you've ever been in the whole world? Hmm? Hmm. Except, uh, hmm. unless you're too tired to hmm. If you're asking a man if he's tired of talking about himself, then you haven't been out much, have you? 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean that to make it sound like some dumb. No, I just statement. meant maybe it's a little dull for you, sitting here telling all this to some housewife in the middle of nowhere. This is your home. This is nowhere. That's not dull. Let's see. I guess I'd have to say that the most exciting place I've ever been to was Africa. Because mm -hmm. it's another world there. Mm -hmm. It's not just the cultures and the, and the people. That's great, but it's the air. You know, the colors from dawn to dusk. And there's something tangible about the whole thing. The cohabitation of man and beast and beast and beast. Who will survive and who won't. There's no judgment about it either. You know, there's, there's no imposed morality. It's just the way it is. It's just beautiful, really. It's just nothing like it. It's a voyeur's paradise. I'd love to see that. <clears throat> they have safaris. You could ask your husband. Yeah. Looks like it's a beautiful evening, huh? Would you like to take a walk? Mm-hmm. You get it all right here, you know. I'm serious. This is as nice a place as I've ever been. Hmm? Silver apples, the moon, and golden apples, and the sun. Yes. Yes. Song of wandering Angus. Huh? Good stuff, Yates, huh? Yes. Realism, economy, sensuousness, beauty, magic. Mm -hmm. All that appeals to my Irish ancestry. <laughs> No, would you like something to drink? Maybe some coffee, maybe some brandy. Maybe some both. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Okay. You sure you want me to help you clean up? I'm not going to wash them now. I'm going to rinse them now. <coughs> Do it later. Francesca? Huh? You all right? Yeah. Francesca? What? What? We're not doing anything wrong, you know. Nothing you couldn't tell your children about. Yeah. Ancient evenings and distant music. Drunk. That's what happened. Jesus, maybe he forced himself. That's why she couldn't tell us. Oh, he did not. He's such a nice guy. Nice? He's trying to sleep with somebody's wife. I don't think so. And besides, something like that doesn't make you a bad person. It reminds me of Steve in a way. Steve's weak, immoral, and a liar, but he's still a real nice guy. He just shouldn't be married. At least not to me. I'm hungry. Are you getting hungry? I had no idea it's gotten that bad, sis. 
Oh, please don't feel sorry for me. Nobody's forcing me to stay. Why do you? <sighs> you mind if I ask you a question? No. Why did you get divorced? I was never around. But why did I get married? Well, that's a good question. I guess I needed a home base, roots. You can kind of get lost when you're on the road, love. Mm. So what happened? I never got lost. Mm. I was more at home everywhere than just in one place. Mm. Kind of like a citizen of the world. Mm. Must get lonely sometimes. No. <clears throat> I never indulge in that. Now, I've got friends all over the world I can visit. Women friends, too? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a loner, but not a monk. <laughs> you really don't need anyone. No, I think I... I think I need everyone. I love people. I'd love to meet them all. Yeah, that's the thing about Iowa. You tend to meet the same kind of person all over and over and over again. So... When Mrs. Delaney's husband has an affair with a Redfield woman, the whole town wakes up. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot of that going around. It seems to me that there's too much of this is mine and he or she is mine. There's just too many lines being drawn, that kind of thing. Mm. You know? Doesn't it scare you, though, being alone? I don't think so. I think I embrace the mystery. Do you ever regret it? What? The divorce, I mean. No. Do you ever regret not having a family? Not everyone's supposed to have a family. But how can you live for just what you want? What about other people? I told you I love other people. But no one in particular. But I love them just the same. It's not the same. It, I know it's not the same, but what you're saying is it's not as good. It's not normal. It's no. not proper. No, that's it, not what I'm is. saying. I, you, you know, I have a little bit of a problem with this American family ethic that seems to have hypnotized the whole country. I guess you probably think of somebody like me as a poor displaced soul who's destined to wander the planet with not having a TV set or a self-cleaning oven. You know, just because someone decides to settle down and have a family doesn't mean they're hypnotized. Just because I've never seen a gazelle stampede doesn't mean I'm asleep in my life. You want to leave your husband? No. Of course not. I, I'm sorry about that. I apologize. <clears throat> what made you ask such a question? I thought that's what we were doing, ask, asking questions. It was stupid, I'm sorry. No, I thought we were having a conversation. You're asking me these questions. You're reading all these meanings into it. Meanings I must be too simple to understand or interpret or some, something. I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, Roseman Bridge at dawn. I guess I can be going. Look, I'm sorry. No. I apologize. Look, you must forgive me. It was a very indiscreet question. Uh, that was just dumb. I feel like something's been spoiled now. Oh, no. It was a perfect evening, just the way it was. Francesca, you're anything but a simple woman.
Johnson's. Richard, hi. Yes. Everyone's settling okay? Uh-huh. Good. I said good. your note. W.B. Yates and all. I, I put it in my pocket and didn't read it right away because the uh, light was changing and I was, had to get my shots. The light was changing. Yeah, but I 
do accept your invitation. It'll have to be a little later, though. Uh, I was going to go over to the Hollowell Bridge and do some shooting over there. After nine, how about that? Yes. You, yes, get your work done. That's what's important. I'll make something nice. We can warm up when you get here. You know, it's just a thought. Maybe you'd like to come along with me. Yes, I would like that, but I, I'll drive my pickup and meet you there. All right? All right. What time? Half at six. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Bye. Lucy Redfield. Apparently, Mrs. Delaney caught them. Sit down here if you like. Are you ordering anything? No. Thanks. I've changed my mind. How about this one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, uh... oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't bought a dress for myself in so long. I mean, I'm just buying a dress, you know. It's not for a special occasion or anything. I'm just shopping. I'm just shopping for a new dress, is all. Mm -hmm. Well, that might work. And if he's still mad, just tell him you could have done better, but you married him out of pity. That always works for me. I'm running a little late, but uh, I'll still I, uh, I, I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but uh, I'm wondering if it's such a good idea. Oh? Yeah, I had lunch in town today, and I crossed paths with that Redfield woman. Oh, I guess you got the whole story. Yeah. The cashier at the grocery store was most generous. Yeah. I think he's running for town crier next year. I learned more about the Delaney affair than I knew about my own marriage. If it's going to be a problem for you to see me tonight, uh, don't feel pressured to do so. I'm sometimes not too bright about other people's reactions. I, I wouldn't want you to be put in a compromising situation. Yeah, I understand. It's very kind of you 
to think of that. Robert. Yeah? I want to come. Okay, so I'll meet you at the bridge like we planned, and don't worry about the rest of it. I'm not. All right. I'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Make yourself at home. I just gotta knock off a few shots here. Yeah, come on. Go ahead. Give me a puppet. Come on. Give me one of those French model looks. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh, no. No, I've got everything under control. I'm just going to go clean myself up a bit. What do you think of that? Well, that's the table. How about that? Oh, Would you like a beer uh, for your bath? that he had been here just a few minutes before. I was lying where the water had run down his body, and I found that intensely erotic. Almost everything about Robert Kincaid had begun to seem erotic to me. What's wrong? 
are my only zoo. There is you look stunning. Face if you don't mind me saying so. If you could see me there would be nothing tragic in all my dreams of you. Johnson's. It Hi. doesn't matter. Hi, Madge. Yeah. Where? No, I was just fixing myself something to eat. Because I No, what? Well, oh, yeah. I heard about him. I hear he's some kind of photographer or something. Mm-hmm. And there you are. Hippie? No, uh... I don't know. Is that what a hippie looks like? Um, no, I was just going to step into a bath when you call, so maybe... Yeah, they don't get back till Fridays. Yeah, maybe I'll call you then, okay? Mm-hmm. Bye. If you could see me too, there It doesn't matter where you are, cause I can see how fair you are. I close my eyes and there you are. If you could see the magic If you could see me too There would be nothing tragic In all my dreams It doesn't matter where you are. No one's asking you to. Because I can see how fair you are. I close my eyes and there you are. In all my dreams of you Would that my love 
what haunt you so knowing knowing I want you so I can't erase your beautiful face before me I can't erase your beautiful face before me. He told me he wouldn't apologize for what was going to happen. What's the matter? I'm going to go get some air. Striped on and yeah. across the way serves arachinos. <laughs> Arachino. Arachinos, yeah. And the police, I know that place. Well, I had coffee there. Did you sit by the doorway or near the, the front of the church? It was near the church. I sat there once. I sat there once on a, a day like this. It was very hot. and I, I'd been shopping and I had all these packages around my feet. I had to keep moving them. forget my story. <laughs> true about myself up until then was gone. I was acting like another woman. Yet I was more myself than ever before. It isn't just we decided to spend Wednesday away from Winterset, away from Madison County, away from pastures and bridges and people too familiar and reminders too painful. We let the day take us where it wanted. Oh, is that India? It's beautiful. Oh, look at this one. Look at their expression. So beautiful. It's as if the camera isn't even on them. They're... You know, they're not photographs. They're stories. You should have these published. You should have your own collection. 
Nobody'd buy it. Why do you say that? Well, six publishers have told me so. No big deal. Whatever it is that makes an artist look like an artist to the world is just a feature I don't have, that's all. Mm. Maybe you have to convince yourself first. Maybe. Maybe you have to ask yourself why it's an obsession. What's that? I remember I had this the other night after you left. It was made for me and Assisi. My aunt gave it to me for my seventh birthday. Francesca. Mm A musician friend of Robert's told him of the place of the interstate. A place, Robert assured me, no one I knew would see us. when you were younger? Trouble. <laughs> Why? Oh, I'm just wondering. Why were you trouble? I had a temper. Why were your parents like your mother and father? I don't know if I can do this, you know. What? Try to cram in a whole lifetime between now and Friday.
Where'd you go? Bar in town. Uh, have you called Betty? Well, maybe you should. I found out who Lucy Delaney is. Remember the Delaney's from Hillcrest Road? Yeah, but I, I thought she died. He remarried. Lucy Redfield. Apparently, they were having an affair for years. Apparently, the first Mrs. Delaney was a bit of a stiff. You mean, uh, she didn't like sex? Mom could have helped. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. All these years, I've resented not living the wildlife in some place like Paris, and all the time I could have moved back to Iowa. <laughs> oh. Are you drunk? Not yet. Oh. You want to get out of here for a while? I think I'd better. <laughs> I never cheated on Betty. Not once we were married, I mean. If you want to. Only about a thousand times. <laughs> what do I do now? What's good enough for Mom is good enough for me. What gets me is I'm in my 40s. And in this crummy, frigid marriage for over 20 yeah, years because that's what I was taught. You stick things out. Normal people don't get divorced. I can't remember the last time my husband made love to me so intensely that he transported me to Africa, for Christ's sake. Quite frankly, I don't think he ever did. <laughs> and now I find out that in between bake sales, my mother was a nice nin. What about me? I feel really weird, like she cheated on me, not Dad. Isn't that sick? <laughs> you know, when you're the only son, you sort of feel like the prince of the kingdom. And in the back of your mind, you kind of think your mother shouldn't want sex anymore because she has you. <laughs> right, that is sick. She was so unhappy. Why didn't she leave? Can I read it now? Did I miss anything important? No. She just took him up to her room. Dad's a room? All right, you can skip that part. Let's just start here. <laughs> Robert lay asleep in the bed. I was up all night that night. What happens tomorrow? By the end of that day, he would leave, and everything new and unknown that had become so familiar would be gone. Did you sleep well? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good. Coffee? Sure. Robert Lau? 
bit on my mask, but I feel like I should. What? <clears throat> well, these uh, women friends of yours all over the world, how does it work? Do you see some of them again, or you forget about others? Or do you write to some of them now and then? Uh, I'll be managing. Hmm? What do you mean? I just need to know the routine, the procedure, so I don't upset your routine, you know? You want some jam? What are you talking about routine? There's no routine. Is that what you think this is? Well, what is this? Well, is it up to me? You're the one who's married, and you have no intention of leaving your husband. To do what? Go off with someone who needs everyone, but no one in particular? I mean, uh, what would be the point? Can you pass me the bag, please? I was honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You have. You have this habit of not needing, and that's very hard to break. But in that case, why sleep? You don't need rest. Why eat? You don't need food. What are you doing? Gee, I don't know. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a world citizen who experiences everything and nothing at the same time. How do you know what I experience? I know you. Oh? And what can this possibly mean to someone who doesn't need meaning, who just goes with the mystery, who pretends that he's not scared to death? Let's stop this right now. You know, after you leave here, I'm gonna have to sit here for the rest of my life and wonder what happened to me, if anything happened at all. And I'm gonna have to wonder if you're gonna be sitting in some housewife's kitchen in Romania or somewhere and uh, telling her all about your world of good friends and who secretly include me in that group. <laughs> What do you want me to say? Uh, I don't uh, want you to say anything. I don't need you to say anything. I want you to stop this right now. Fine. More eggs or shall we just fuck on the linoleum one last time? I'm not going to be... I, I'm not going to apologize for no, who I am. Nobody's asking And you. I'm not going to be made to feel like I've done something no, wrong No, you're not going to be made to feel anything, period. Because you have carved out this little part for yourself in the world where you get to be a voyeur and a hermit and a, and a lover whenever you feel like it. And the rest of us are supposed to feel incredibly grateful for this brief moment that you touched us. Go to hell! It isn't human not to be lonely, and it isn't human not to be afraid! You're a hypocrite and you're a phony! I don't want to need you. What? Because I can't have you. What difference does that make? Don't you see? I just... Oh, Robert, don't you see? I just have to know the truth, huh? I just have to know the truth because, because if I don't, I'll go crazy. So just tell me, either way, because I can't act like this is enough because it has to be. And I can't pretend not to feel what I feel because it's over tomorrow. If I've done anything, to make you think that what we have between us is nothing new for me. It's just some routine. And I do apologize. What makes it different, Robert? It's just, when I think of why I make pictures, the only reason I can come up with it just seems that I've been making my way here. It seems right now that all I've ever done in my life has been making my way here to you. And if I have to think about leaving here tomorrow <laughs> without you, I... Oh, my God.
Coming with me, are you? <sighs> no matter how many times I turn it over and over in my mind, it doesn't seem like the right thing. For who? For anyone. They'll never be able to live through the talk. And Richard. Richard will never be able to get his arms around this. It will break him in half. He doesn't deserve that. He's never hurt anyone in his whole life. Well, I can 
move on. People move. His family has had this farm for over a hundred years. Richard doesn't know how to live anywhere else. And my kids. They're practically grown. You said yourself they hardly talk to you. Yeah, they don't say much. <laughs> But Caroline is only 16. And she's about to find out about all this for herself. She's going to fall in love and she's going to try to build a life with someone. If I leave, what does that say to her? What about us? You have to know, deep down, the minute we leave here, everything will change. Yeah, it could get, could get better. And no matter how much distance we put between ourselves and this house, I... I carry it with me. I... I feel it every minute we're together and... I will start to blame loving you for how much it hurts. And then even these, even these four beautiful days will seem just like something sordid and a mistake. Francesca, do you think what happens with us just, just happens to anyone? What we feel, what we feel for each other, we're hardly, hardly two separate people now. Some people search all their life for this and never find it. Others don't even think it exists. You're gonna tell me that you, you're gonna tell me that this is the right thing to do? Give, yeah. Giving it up. We are the choices that we have made, Robert. You don't understand. Oh, don't you see? Nobody understands when a woman ma makes a choice to marry and have children. In one way, her love begins, but in another way, it stops. You build a life of details and you just stop and stay steady so that your children can move. And when they leave, they take your life of details with them. You're expected to move on again, but you don't even remember what it was that moved you because nobody says you're it's slow. Not even yourself. Oh, but you never think. You never think love like this is going to happen to you. But now that you have it. Uh, now I, I want to keep it forever. I want to. Love you the way I do now for the rest of my life. But if we leave, we lose it. And then I can't make an entire life disappear to start a new one. All I can do is try to hold on to both of us. Somewhere inside of me. You you have to help me. feel this way, maybe you don't. Maybe it's just because you're in this house. Maybe tomorrow when they come back, you'll feel differently. Don't you think that's possible? I don't know. Well, look, I'm, I'm going to be here a few more days. We can, we can talk later. We don't have to decide right now. Robert, don't, don't do this. I don't want to say goodbye right now. We don't have to make that decision. Maybe you'll change your mind. Maybe we'll see each other and you'll change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> if that happens, you have to decide. <laughs> because I can't.
say this once. I, I've never said it before. But this kind of certainty comes but just once in a lifetime. Take you too long to get here. Huh? No, Three hours, what? Yeah. Really Good. Are you hungry? I got something for you. Hmm? You all came home, and with you, my life of details. A day or two passed, and with each thought of him, a task would present itself like a lifesaver, pulling me further and further away from those four days. I was grateful. I felt safe. Put me out of my misery. I can't stand the suspense. Go ahead, shoot. Talking about you. I know I'm a gunner. I can't stand the suspense. Shoot. I don't even need a blindfold. <laughs> Condemned man's dinner, chicken peas, watermelon. <laughs>
didn't know where I was. And for a split second, the thought crossed my mind that he really didn't want me. That it was easy to walk away. Robert leaned over as if to get something from the glove box. Eight days ago, he'd done that, and his arm had brushed across my leg. A week ago, I'd been in Des Moines buying a new dress. truck's a long way from home. Washington State. I'll bet it's that photographer they've been talking about over at the cafe. Boy, what's he waiting for? The words were inside of me. I was wrong, Robert. I was wrong to stay, but I can't go. Let me tell you again why I can't go. Tell me again why I should go. I heard his voice coming back to me. This kind of certainty comes but once in a lifetime. What's wrong, Patty? Please tell me what's wrong with you. I just need a minute, Richard. I just need...
I was grateful for the silence that night. I realized love won't obey our expectations. Its mystery is pure and absolute. What Robert and I had could not continue if we were together. What Richard and I shared would vanish if we were apart. But how I wanted to share this. How would our lives have changed if I had? Could anyone else have seen the beauty of it? Hi. I'm Francesca Johnson. And I... I, <laughs> I feel awful that I haven't come to visit you sooner. I, is it a bad time for you? I, am I interrupting anything? Is it too late? No. Not at all. We became inseparable, Lucy and I. The funny thing is, I didn't tell her about Robert until years later. But for some reason, being with her somehow made me feel it was safe to think about it, to continue loving him. <laughs> I still love talking about the two of us, but we didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> and neither did your father. Next time, huh? I just want to say, I know you had your own dreams. I'm sorry I couldn't give them to you. I love you so very much. After your father died, I tried to get in touch with Robert, but I found out he had left the National Geographic. No one seemed to know where he was. My only connections to him were the places that we'd been to on that one day. And so, each year on my birthday, I'd revisit them. And then one day, I received the letter from his attorney with a package.
There has not been a day since that I have not thought of him. When he said we were no longer two people, he was right. We were bound together as tightly as two people can be. If it hadn't been for him, I don't think I would have lasted on the farm all those years. Remember that dress of mine you wanted, Carolyn? The one you said I never wore. I know I was silly, but to me it was as if you were asking to wear my wedding dress to go to the movies. After reading all this, I hope you can now understand my burial request. It was not the ravings of some mad old lady. I gave my life to my family. I wish to give Robert what is left of me. Hey, Dad. Can I talk to you for a minute? You whiten me. You made me little heart quiver. God, I've been gone all night long. Do I even have the right to ask you where you've been? Do I make you happy, Betty? Because I want to. More than anything. Hi, Steve. It's me. Good. You? Listen, we have to talk. Well, how about now? Uh, no. I've decided I'm going to stay here for a while. I don't know how long. No, I'm not angry, Steve. I'm not. I'm not angry at all. I gave Lucy his photography book. If you are interested, take a look. If my words still leave some things unclear, perhaps his pictures can illuminate. After all, that's what an artist does best. I love you both with all my heart. Do what you have to, to be happy in this life. There is so much beauty. Go well, my children. <laughs>